Welcome to Big Data Analytics. You can take a look at the syllabus that I've posted on Blackboard. Uh, I don't think there's any point in me going over the details of the syllabus here. Of course, you can always send me a message on Slack if you have any questions regarding the syllabus. So let's get started. Broadly speaking, I'm looking at this course as consisting of two parts. The first part is just going to be learning data science concepts and R on regular small data. Because after all, let's face it, when you go out and start working in organizations, very few organizations have real big data that will not actually fit into the memory of a reasonable computer, right? And therefore, uh, first of all, you have to learn how to do data science with regular data, right? And this doesn't mean that regular data is actually small data, because you can fit really huge data sets even onto your laptops or even onto your cell phones, okay? Uh, so there's a lot of important data that will fit into R and will fit into small devices. And unless we are able to do useful things with those data sets, we can hardly do anything with really big data sets, right? So I think the first order of business is for us to understand how to do data science on regular data sets, which need not really be small. They can be pretty big as well, right? And after all, when you go and work in an organization, uh, you're going to face 99% of the time only these sorts of data sets. And if you're not able to do useful things with these data sets, uh, it's not going to be good, okay? So you have to first learn data science on regular data sets. And then the second part of the course will look at actually doing stuff with real big data, right? By big data, I really mean data that will not actually fit onto one computer. Uh, data that is actually typically stored on some large server computer or actually stored across multiple computers, and then you have to do your data science. Okay, so that's the second part of the course. Okay, now again, I emphasize that even when we talk about data sets that fit into one computer, they can still be very big data sets. For example, you may have a data set with a million rows just sitting on your laptop. That by any uh, you know, by any description, that is a big data set, okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to first learn how to do data science, of course, using R on reasonable data sets and then move on to big data sets. Okay, again, coming to uh, the, the point about R, uh, well, after all, in the last semester, when you did the course on business intelligence, you learned R, but at that time, I restricted the attention on R only to what you needed to do uh, to get done, right? So most of the time you were using uh, predetermined commands that were useful for, uh, uh, you know, predictive and descriptive analytics, and you just learned how to use those commands, okay? Now, when you go out into the real world, that information or that knowledge of R alone is not sufficient. You need to be able to take a, a data set and then do all sorts of creative things on the data set. Okay, so you need to enhance your R skills and that's where we'll begin the course. Once we do that, of course, we'll be able to go into big data. So that's what we're going to be doing in this course. We'll maintain a very simple workflow in this course. I aim to post all the course materials by end of day on Monday, right? So every week when there is class, uh, except for I think the week of uh, the spring break, I'll be posting all the materials for the week by end of day on Monday. Okay, which would mean videos, uh, any documents, assignments, any data sets that you need, any code that you need, everything I'll post on, uh, on Monday, uh, by end of day on Monday. And of course, that will include the assignment. And your job is to complete it and submit all the assignments by end of day on the following Sunday. Okay, this is the schedule we'll follow. And of course, I'll, uh, when I post materials on Blackboard, I'll also post the due dates accordingly. Right. And of course, uh, if from the previous course, you're familiar that uh, along with the assignments, I post all the answers. So uh, the assignment solutions will be visible to you as soon as you submit the answers. OK, and for every assignment, I'll also allow you uh, two attempts, right, so that you make some mistakes on the first attempt. You want to get everything right. You can uh, do a second attempt and, and post it correctly. Right now, I do this because I view assignments very much as part of your learning process, right? So I present some material, I, uh, you know, give, we do some examples and so on in the lecture, uh, but your learning is still not complete 
till you actually look at the assignments and struggle through the assignments, right? So it's I expect fully that you will make some mistakes in the assignments and in uh, struggling through the assignments, that's where you really uh, crystallize all your learning, right? So I don't want to penalize you for uh, making any mistakes in the assignments and that's why I make the assignments kind of uh, low stakes, okay? Again, uh, it's very easy for you to, to skip the assignments and think that you're saving some time, uh, but that's the surest way to shoot yourself in the foot, right? Because as you know from the previous course, you're going to learn by doing. There's really no way I can stuff any knowledge into your brains by talking at you or through a video. The only way you're going to learn is to assimilate some concepts during the lectures, but really crystallize everything when you do hands-on work, okay? So the assignments are there for your benefit and uh, it's in your best interest to start the assignments as early as you can during the week. Uh, don't just start the assignments on Sunday afternoon and try to get it done by Sunday evening. Uh, you might still get it done uh, or you might be able to borrow the answers from some friend who's already submitted the assignment and is able to see the answers. Uh, but all of that is, is really pointless, okay? Uh, so that's, uh, that's what we're going to do with respect to assignments. Uh, now let's take a look at a very broad overview of uh, of the course and of the process of data analytics, right? Now in the earlier course, whatever data sets we got, the data sets were clean data sets, right? They had no missing values and uh, all the data was fine and we could just jump right into using some analytics techniques on them. In reality, when you go to an organization and you work, you'll get data that's actually very messy. Okay, so the first step will be for you to even import the data from various sources. And before you can do anything meaningful with the data, the first step will be to tidy the data, right? You have to clean up the data. And there are lots of techniques within R on how to do data cleanup. We learn all of those things. Okay, so that's the first part. And the second part is that even if after you've cleaned up the data, uh, usually it's not in a form that is ready to be analyzed right then and there you need to go through a process of transforming the data into a form that makes it more convenient for us to analyze the data. So there's a whole transforming step. And then of course, uh, although we focused a lot in the previous course on doing machine learning, uh, doing you know, classification, prediction, uh, you know, cluster analysis, affinity analysis, all of these things, in reality, the most important part of data analytics or the uh, before you can do anything meaningful, the first thing we have to do is to visualize the data and understand it, right? So for example, if you're given a very large data set and it has, uh, let's say, uh, 20 columns or 20 attributes and it has tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of rows of data, uh, the first thing is for us to be able to take a look at it and really get a grip on what's going on with the data, right? So that is the exploratory part of the data analysis, which we did not stress a lot on in the first course, right? Uh, but that's really important because that is what gives you an understanding of the data. It gives you various hypotheses on what further analysis you can do and so on. Okay, uh, so visualization is a very, very important part uh, of uh, hypothesis generation on the data. So in this course, we'll do, uh, we'll stress that much more than we did in the last course. Now, in fact, you will also realize that in real organizations, quite often getting a data set and putting it in a good form uh, for people to visualize and understand the data, uh, that itself might be a project, right? You're able to take your data set, show it to your manager, and the manager is then able to go through the visualizations that you have created and get some intuitive understanding of the data and of the organization and of the decision situation. That might itself be a great contribution to the organization. It often is, you know, producing good visualizations is very important, okay? So that's a really crucially important step and uh, this semester we'll go a little deeper into that part of it, okay? So having done that, of course, in visualization, you generate hypothesis, you generate deeper understanding, then you try to build models to do whatever it is you want to do. Again, these models might be predictive models, they may be descriptive models, whatever it is. You know, for example, when we say model, we might be talking about classification and regression and uh, cluster analysis and all of those things. So you do that. But of course, when you do the modeling, you learn more and you say, well, uh, you know, uh, maybe there's something else you can do because it's after all a creative process you learn there. And then you may say, okay, in order to do that, I need to transform the data into a different form. You transform it, you visualize it, you model it, and you may go through this process 
uh, several iterations of this process, right? So this whole thing is really where you understand what is going on with the data, okay? And finally, once you've done all the analysis you want to, built all the models that you want to, you need to communicate your findings effectively and that's the next step, okay? So, and of course, in doing all of this, you'll be using the R program to do all of these things, okay? Now, of course, we have started with R, we are continuing with R, uh, but you must understand that R is only one program, one data analytics program, uh, and I won't even claim that it is the absolute best program available out there. You know, when you go into an organization, you may have to do things with different programming uh, environments, you know, maybe an organization you join uses Python, so you may have to learn Python, or they use uh, something called Julia, which is a new thing that's coming up. You know, you may have to learn that. Doesn't matter. Once you have learned the underlying concepts, which is very important, because this course is not just about typing in R commands. It's not a course on R. It's a course on uh, data analytics. Okay, so you're becoming a data scientist, of course, but in order to apply your skills, you have to learn it with something concrete, and we have chosen R, okay? Which is not to say that R is not a useful language. It's an extremely useful language. Having R on your resume is a huge uh, benefit to you. Many organizations would see that and jump at it. So it's a very useful thing, but don't get hung up on R alone. The course really has two important parts. One is R, and the other is data science. And I would definitely say the data science part of it, understanding it, is as important as knowing R. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And you already know that uh, we'll be using R through R Studio. And of course, at this stage, I would assume that all of you have R Studio installed on your computer, R and R Studio installed on your computer. And uh, of course, you can see that I am using the Macintosh or Mac version of R. But of course, you, you have either the Windows or the Mac version, depending on what you used. Uh, now, R Studio uh, has released a new version, version 1.0 point something, and if possible, upgrade to that. You don't have to really do much, just download the latest version, install it, and that's, that's what will be working for you, right? So I would say install the latest version. Why? Because it has some additional nice features that at some stage in the course I might jump into. Uh, but it's not crucial. To, to start with, your old version of R Studio will do absolutely fine. In fact, uh, you might be able to go through everything with just the R Studio that you have, but it's got some new features, so why not? Okay, so so that's R Studio, uh, and the second thing, of course, is uh, that uh, you already know that uh, when we use R, the basic R software contains a lot of features, but the main power of R comes from the fact that it is extensible, right? Whatever new features come out, you can install them. Uh, through the fact notion of R packages, and you can install whatever package you need and perform the analysis, right? So you know how to do the package installation process. You can either type a command, install.packages, or of course you can use the menu options within R Studio to, uh, to in install new packages, okay? Now in this course, later on, uh, maybe not in this first lecture, but in the second or third lecture onwards, uh, we'll install one package and that package will install everything else that is needed for the whole course, okay? So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, but for the first class, I won't be installing any additional packages. What you have already is good enough, okay? So this is the whole process of where uh, you install a package and uh, your computer has to be connected to the internet when you do that because it goes to an internet-based repository and from there it picks up whatever new packages, right? So when you install a package, that package becomes available on your local computer, okay? But in order to be able to use the package, you have to load every package that you need to use, right? Other than the core packages that get loaded with R when R starts, right? And you know that to do that, you use the library command or within R Studio, go to the package view and just check the package that you want, okay? So this is the, the broad process. I'm just trying to remind you of how this thing works, okay? So that's about uh, the course introduction. Let's move on to the subject matter of the course itself. 